Hello, Christine. How are you today? Good. How are you, Stephen? I'm doing well. Uh, I've loved your work since the first episode. It's such a beautiful series, and your work really enhances it. So it's it's great to speak to you. Uh, well, thank you, and thank you for noticing. So what is your Marvel origin story? Were you a fan of the universe growing up? Yeah, you're not going to like this answer, but um, I didn't watch a lot of Marvel stuff, but I... And but I quickly realized in season one, when I was doing the research that and really doing a deep dive into Marvel, that it could be an asset <laughs> in a weird way, because I didn't have a I didn't have a deep um, encyclopedia knowledge of. Of the Marvel world. But but now you're you must have a much more expanded uh, much, understanding much of it all. Much more expanded. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, better late than ever, right? Yeah, exactly. So what what originally attracted you to work on Loki? The well, honestly, the script was Michael Waldron's script was it, not only was it funny, but it was visually so the the language was there. It was just right there. And um and I knew that it was going to be a little bit of an outlier and quirky just from the pages and Kate the first director was I don't know it just all felt we all had similar references we all had a same sort of aesthetic uh needs and desires so it just yeah it seemed like a no-brainer it was just a no-brainer to do it and prior to this, you had such a diverse library of work and Loki that was such so expansive. There's so many different like layers to this world, uh, you know, characters, actually, you know, variations on characters and and, and uh, variations on reality. Where do you start? Well, I mean, it's all you start with a lot of research and a lot of, like I said, well, obviously starting with the script, but then really getting in touch with the production design and where production design is going to go and um and then just doing a extensive dive into my research which is really vast which tends to be uh not only old movies but art and photography and fabrics and uh just architecture has always been something that's meant a lot to me and I think that it shows in the TVA uniforms. There's a, there's that like all these little sort of brutalist effects to those or details to those costumes. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's really just building a world through research, building that outline. Well, that's where I was gonna start with the costumes is uh, the TVA has got like a, bureauc a bureaucratic hell, part office, part military. And it's just such a unique look, especially for uh, the MCU. Can you tell me some of the inspiration for those sure. costumes? Um, well, first off, it was like I I wanted people to feel somewhat anonymous in there, so the color palette choice to sort of marry into the world and not let people, not let the staff, uh, jump out was very deliberate. But then it was sort of structured on like a DMV hierarchy like I just wanted to create also uh hierarchies within that system and I also looked to some of the um like Apollo mission photos of like the you know that the a mission room right where mm -hmm. you just see people um to give it to try to figure out really in, in styling some something that's basically a dress code or a uniform how people still always make things a little individualized so there was clear intent in not letting everybody just be in a suit and a tie and that some people had their jacket off and rolled their sleeves or some people had glasses on some people, just to give it a, a more believability than mm -hmm. um not and uh, not be too much of a star trek situation right um yeah and in that setting uh gugu mabathara has looks so stylish this year uh i was wondering how did you approach her costume and, and how has she evolved 
it's a direct involvement from season one because there was always this conversation about her strengths and her weaknesses and but mostly how she projected strength and um and and I think it's kind of been a thread through at least um in my mind it's been a thread throughout season one and season two is is addressing power and masculinity and femininity and what does that all mean and so she has been uh it's like what does it what does a skirt mean versus pants in terms of power so that's why her coat can look in season one can look sort of like a dress at times but it or it can look like a suit um so this second season um just choosing the color palette for her was also very it was a, a deliberate nod to that interplay between masculinity and femininity and also giving her culottes and pants, which is actually really a uh, 18 uh, Victorian era uh, bicycle riding suit that mm -hmm. actually existed. That style did exist, but women didn't really wear pants in that era. But I mean, you, you should put together a book because it would be really interesting to see the inspiration side by side with, you know, and, and that's how the character evolves too, because there's so much that goes into it. And you know, you get to watch it, enjoy, but you don't hear, you know, this is, it's great to hear this. Um, so let's go into to Loki a little bit. He's part kind of old school private eye. And then of course, part God of mischief. What were your goals for, uh, for him this season? I was trying to figure out, and it was tricky, how to keep him still within the TVA world, because he clearly has an attachment to those he loves within the TVA. He, you clearly see that he's torn about the, you know, with keeping the TVA um, and his friends within the TVA, but also just leaking in some of Loki and Loki's decision making. If Loki can conjure up what he gets to wear, what would it be when he is torn between worlds? Um, so it was trying to give that TVA uniform a little bit more of a of Loki intent and just giving it um, more moxie, the collar, which is very Loki, the upturned collar and the big collar, mm -hmm. just giving it um, a lot more swagger, but having it still somewhat feel like a TVA uniform to a degree. Well, like I said, I was at New York Comic Con this last weekend, and I saw dozens, maybe hundreds of variants of Loki. So oh, yeah. people have been not only in, enjoying your work, but copying it. So it's uh Did they get a weird... three-dimensional collar? Did they do the... That's... I mean, uh, I mean they they know their stuff. There's It's amazing. The Did work they... you put into it is not going unnoticed, is what I'm trying to say. I, I think it's my favorite thing of doing this marvel entering into this marvel universe the fans are and what they're capable of and what they actually see and the details that they um, pick up on it just make me want to do such a better job all the time it's really and it's so positive like in, mm -hmm. usually like in what world is the response to stuff 90 percent positive and i feel like with the marvel fans it's genuine generally positive it's incredible so speaking of tom and, and and owen they have such great chemistry on screen how what is it like working directly with them are they uh, just as much fun off or oh. are they jerks <laughs> <laughs> jerks no no they're so fun i mean you can only imagine that like well tom being the most studious person on the planet just brings everything to the table and owen just being Owen, like so casual. And so um, um, it's like East Coast meets West Coast, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but both with huge dedication. And um, it's a, it's such a dream to work with them because you it gives you s incredible guidelines for your research in a, in a weird way, because they're there's so much that's already unsaid or unspoken in terms of their uh, uh, how they've developed the characters, right? 
um, that it helps when you're trying to look, find research or illustrate what they're going to wear the next season. It's, it gives you that foundation to, to kind of always go in the right direction, really. And then we have Kang, who's been in the past draped in purple and very powerful and intimidating. This year, we get a much more humanized version of him and wearing, like I guess I think it's 1800s uh, suit and, and attire. What was the thinking behind that? And, and how did you approach Kang? Um, well, Timely. And Timely was, um, it, with as we were talking about the research process for the TVA, there's with the 1890s World Fair, it was also really take trying to take as much from real inspiration as possible. So Frederick Douglass was at the Chicago World's Fair. So it was um he was visually a, a big inspiration for that character. So it's his he's a little bit backdated. Um, his clothes are a little bit backdated and the rise of his pant is even higher than it should normally be. There's just a, uh, there is actually kind of an awkwardness built into that costume that I love. I love that the, the, the pants are just a little too floody. It just gives the whole character a little more quirkiness and, um, but there is a nod to his backstory in the color palette, but very subtly, just as if you were to colorize a black and white photo with the purple, with a little bit of a purple wash. Um, I, I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes with him because uh, obviously big things ahead. Um, and you mentioned your details, the detail that goes into the work. Can you give me some Easter eggs that you've uh, worked in that you know fans may not have noticed or you're hoping they do? Well, there's things that are funny that people will never know. I, like I did build him period underwear um, timely. So he's actually un underneath all of that hat from top to bottom. It's all within the period. Um, and but Easter egg wise, it's mostly just like uh, I it's really not nods to the MCU. It's more just within the character uh, within the time periods. And close out with uh, one I'm sure you've answered before. Which is your favorite variant of Loki? Mine is is Richard or uh, Richard Grant. Oh, well, classic Loki. You just answered, yeah. Oh, really? It is. Well, it is because I always think to myself, and well, I I think I said to somebody else in an interview, it would be I'd love him to get his spinoff series. Oh yeah. Yes. No, I, I I love I love classic Loki. Yeah, it's definitely and. And, and at least sneak in one more. Um, your single favorite costume besides classic Loki across the series? Maybe for working on it, what you're most proud of and anything. Hmm. Because there's so many. It's insane. There's That's, so You go many. from Pompeii to the TVA to, you know. I know. Gods and men and. Well, what's interesting is like, I really wish we could have seen. A, a Lamentus happened. Um in season one, right after COVID, we shot it. So there, mm -hmm. there is so much, there was so many costumes in there that I wish we could have seen more of because there would have been more, it should have been fuller. There should have been more people, right? But um, uh, I did love, I actually loved building that world because I just think it was just so weird. It was just such a weird world, but you didn't get to see a lot of it, all of it, unfortunately. Well, thank you for your time. Congrats on your work. I truly look forward to seeing what you do next because, I mean, everything so far has just been spectacular. And maybe next year I'll I'll turn up the collar and be Loki myself. 